What's going on, everybody? So I felt led to share this word this morning and anyone who has the spirit of God, if they pray about this, you know, God will show them and they will know that I'm speaking the truth. And this is really not something new, but I felt that the Lord wanted me to say this <clears throat> to you guys this morning. Um, but it's an accumulation of things that I've been prophesying since 2000, uh, you know, 14, 15. And so one of the things about America, we've had a very unique experience with Christianity. If you look at the history of Christianity and if you look at Christianity and other parts of the world, you know, they've been persecuted, real persecution. They've had to deal with um, just so much backlash for being a Christian. And in America, we've always kind of had support when it comes to being a Christian. We even see slaves were encouraged to be, uh, you know, Christians and were given Bibles and things like that. But there's been a shift in the culture and in the mindset. There's been an uprising. And God began to show me this when President Obama became president. Um, you know, the elites and the powers that be and the people that are behind this shift. Remember, the Bible says the spirit of the Antichrist is already moving among the earth. So the Antichrist is not here, but the spirit of the Antichrist is already here. It's already moving. It's already moving things around. And so God allows certain things to happen because there's certain, you know, just prophetic things that have to happen. And so when Obama became president, he pushed the LGBTQ agenda. And if you really look at the timeline of what has happened since he did the things that he did, I mean, it, it has increased. It's more than just gay marriage. It's now it's like, you know, you can't speak your Christian belief openly without getting some kind of backlash. You know, now they want representation in all the movies and all the TV shows. They're teaching it to the kids in the school. And now you got people running around saying that, you know, I'm not going to know my kid's gender until they're 18 years old. Um, you've got the transgender stuff. You've got the men in the girls' bathroom stuff. So it, it really opened up something. And one of the things that I like to, you know, say how to explain it is they've come out the closet and they're not going back. And now we don't hate anybody. We're not going to bash anybody. But just because we disagree with certain lifestyles doesn't mean that we hate. But here's the thing. Now that it's come out, and they've got that momentum, you have to understand that there's been a shift. Now they just want more and more territory. That's why churches are getting uh, in trouble. That's why Christian businesses are getting sued. And some of you, you haven't seen it yet. It hasn't affected your business. It hasn't come to you. But the thing is, these individuals are not gonna go back in the closet. They're gonna look to gain more ground and territory. And one of the ways that God showed me in a vision that that's gonna happen is through legislation. They're gonna, they're gonna go to the courtrooms. They're gonna go... Uh, through the politics, all right? And then, of course, you have people like Joe Biden who are pandering to them. Um, and they're gonna go through the politics to create legislation that's gonna create a conflict between Christians, all right, and what we believe and, and what they're trying to do. And so here's the issue. What is beginning to happen is a watered down version of Christianity that is, um, you know, acceptable in America. As long as you don't say certain things, as long as you don't stand for certain things, they're cool with you being a Christian. And that's why you have all of these Hollywood people and then all these uh, people in the music industry claiming to be Christian. And so that Christianity is going to get pushed forward as acceptable. But it's a watered down Christianity. It's a it's a form of godliness, uh, you know, fake Christianity. And God is not pleased with it. And so here in America, the problem with Christians is we've been blessed for so long because we've had support in America to be Christian. But slowly over time, we see that that is shifting. They don't want in God we trust on the dollar bills. They don't want prayer in the schools. They, they want to dictate to you what Christianity should be in the same way that they tried to dictate to African-Americans how they should think. We saw that with Chelsea Handler, or I believe that's her name. I got to remind 50 Cent that he's black, so he can't vote for Trump. I got to remind, uh, you know, Rosa Parks that she's black, so she has to sit in the back of the bus. I got to remind this individual that they're black, so they can't sit in uh, this part of the dining area. So we have a lot of people that are trying to dictate what Christianity is. They're trying to dictate how people should think. But the Bible says for us to take on the mind of Christ. 
Let me tell you something. God has allowed Donald Trump to come in the middle of this, this big shift as a wall, um, as a sign for us to repent, as a sign for us to uh, just prepare. And I'm going to show you, it's clear as day to me. I often see that people speak things in the natural, but it's a representation of what's really happening in the spirit and they don't realize it. So Trump came in, he said, I'm going to build a wall, I'm going to build a wall, I'm going to build a wall. Well, he has, well, they obviously have been building that wall, but he has built another wall and that's what the Supreme Court justice is. Think about everything that I just said about the shift that is happening in America. God has allowed him to come in and put almost like a safeguard, okay, in the Supreme Court. So now these same people who are pushing this agenda are saying expand the court because Trump has been effective in building a wall that is going to help with some of the things that are to come. But God showed me that this wall is a temporary thing, all right? They're going to try to tear this thing down. They're going to try to come against it. But right now, as of right now, having the majority uh, with the, you know, the Supreme Court justices, if they pass any laws or legislation when it comes to, you know, the abortions and the full-term abortions and the LGBTQ and all these different things, it's probably going to get shut down for a time being. So what God showed me about Trump was Trump is a season of grace and a season to repent and a season to wake up and get right. And most people can't see that because they're in their feelings. They don't like him as a person. But the Bible says that carnal people cannot receive the things of the spirit. If you pray about what I'm saying, God will show you this to be true. Now, I believe that we're going to get another four years of grace for people to wake up and for people to build. Remember, God showed me Isaiah 45. President Trump is the 45th president. King Cyrus told the children of Israel in Isaiah 45 to go build the temple even though he was not saved. And that's what God showed me. Now is a season to build because there is a time that is coming where a King Saul will be crowned. America is going to get, I don't think it's going to be Joe Biden. I don't think it's going to be Kamala Harris, but they're going to get what they're asking for. And God is giving Christians a chance to prepare because there's going to be a shift where Christianity is actually going to start costing Christians something in America that it has not cost us before. Now, other countries like China, other predominantly Muslim countries, they know all about this. And this is something that Christians in America have not yet had to learn because we haven't faced real persecution. We're starting to see it now. You post certain things, you're going to get attacked, you're going to get bashed, you might even get fired from the job. But that is not something that we've really had to deal with in America because it's always been acceptable to be Christian in America. They even say, you know, there's there's gay Christians, there's Hollywood Christians. Everybody's a Christian, but what kind of Christian you are? Because then they begin to look at you and you say, well, that Christian is a radical Christian. Christians who speak the truth, Christians who stand up for the what the Bible says, um, you know, they're radical Christians. And people say, well, you shouldn't be involved in politics. Well, why is God speaking to his people about politics? That's something that men came up with, separation of church and state. God wants to be Lord over our life. So God is speaking to his people about politics. He's giving warnings about politics. Daniel and the lion's den was because of politics. Shavrat, Meshach, and Abednego was because of politics. The story of Esther was because of politics. There's many stories in the Bible where the kings and the powers that be created legislation that affected the children of God. But because we have not seen that in America, Yet people, it's hard for people to receive what I'm saying. It's hard for people to receive what I'm saying when I tell you that Democrats are going to be the ones that bring legislation that they're going to have to make Christians bow down to. All right. That's just what God showed me. Bottom line that even if even if they add some other kind of party, if they have the same kind of thinking that liberal thinking where anything goes and they're and they're open to pushing this antichrist agenda, it's still the same thing. They're not going to go back to hiding in the closet. They want more ground and they want more territory. But here's the good news. With everything that's going on, God always makes a way of escape. So if there's temptation to bow down because you're scared for your family or you're scared you're going to lose your job, the Bible says God always makes a way of escape. So a great victory is coming. First of all, I, I believe Trump will win again next week unless, you know, somehow they cheat with his melon voting and stuff like that. I believe he's going to win and it's going to give us more time to just evangelize, have revival and see people wake up. But if, you know, for some reason he didn't win or later down the road when they do get their person in office, 
the great victory is that God is about to bless his kingdom. He's about to bless his kingdom people with finances and resources so that we can self sustain one another. There's going to be kingdom um, infrastructure, infrastructure. There's going to be kingdom everything, kingdom doctors, kingdom kingdom people in politics, kingdom everywhere so that we will be able to stay, sustain one another. And one of the things is there's going to be a uniting of the kingdom. Now, I'm not talking about just any old denomination. I'm talking about denominations that are spirit filled. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's clear as day. They're born of the water and they're born of the spirit, as the Bible says. And so a lot of people, you know, you, you got Baptists, you got oneness, you've got uh, Trinitarians, you got Pentecostals, you got um, you know, a lot of different groups. I ain't talking about Jehovah's Witness and stuff like that, but there's going to be a unity because the rest of, you know, the world is coming together and there's things that some groups do well and some denominations do well that others don't. And there's going to have to be a coming together for the time that is coming. And a lot of people are not going to like that, but that's another thing that God showed me. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I want to say is, the cell phone is shaping a lot of your kids' minds. Not only are they trying to indoctrinate your kids in the colleges and the schools, but the cell phone that your kids have is shaping a lot of their worldviews more than just going to church once a week. And so one of the things that I know that I'm going to do in Chicago at Firehouse is I'm going to create a community. We need a community where our children can come, they can be protected, and they can have fun. But there's so many things that are trying to dictate, you know, their worldview. It's really bad in the schools. I told you guys, my daughter, she's eight years old and they had like a little election kind of thing where they wanted them to vote. And so she said she went, you know, she went to vote and I didn't, you know, co uh, how you say coach or anything like that. She said she went to vote and she wanted to vote for Trump, but it was like they only have the option to vote for Biden. So they were pretty much saying like, um, you know, yeah, this is how the elections work. We're going to let you guys vote, but we're only going to let you vote for Biden. So they're already trying to indoctrinate the children. And then if you got it, if you're not monitoring what your kids are looking at the cell, on the cell phone, the cell phone is shaping a lot of their world views more than just going to church on a Sunday morning. So you got to wake up. You got to pay attention. All right. So for those of you who came in late, just a quick summary. We've had a unique experience with Christianity in America. And things have shifted, and it's been shifting for a while, but there was a big shift when Obama became president, a very big shift. And we see that you can't speak what the Bible says without really getting attacked anymore. So one of the things that happened, there's a watered down version of Christianity that is being pushed because of the history in America. They even encouraged slaves to be Christians. So there's a watered down, they're not gonna, it's not gonna be the persecution that we see like in China and places like that right away because of the unique history in America with Christianity. And there's no other place like that. So there's things that we haven't had to learn about persecution and things because we just haven't dealt with it. We've been able to just go to church freely, but that's changing because there is a group that is rising that hates God, that doesn't believe in God. They're moving in the spirit of the Antichrist. They're pushing everything that God um, is against, you know, abortions, LGBTQ, uh, they want to mark people, chip people, all kinds of stuff, you know, putting science over God they're, and they're pushing it in the schools. They're pushing it everywhere. And they feel like they're doing the world a favor by coming against Christianity. Now, they're, they're, because we're so politically correct in America, they try to be or they try to act like they're tolerant. They're going to present a form of Christianity that's acceptable. That's why everybody in Hollywood and the music industry and stuff like that, they claim to be Christians. That kind of Christianity will be acceptable. But a Christian who stands for what the Bible says, for example, about the LGBTQ, about abortions, about holding people accountable, that's not going to be acceptable, acceptable and it's going to be pushed as hate speech. And so now you're going to have a choice. Do I water down my Christianity, you know, and bow down or do I stand for what's right and lose family and lose friends and, you know, get attacked and get bashed and get, um, you know, physically uh, maybe abused in some cases because we've seen a lot of crazy stuff. You know, I told you guys a couple stories about people voting for Trump and, you know, getting beat up and family members turning on family members. And guess what? The Bible says all these things would happen, you know, father against son and uh, mother against daughter. So just wake up and pay attention. This is a real prophetic word. If you go pray about it, you know what I'm saying? God will open your eyes and you will see that what I'm saying is the truth, but we don't have to be afraid. God is going to make a way of escape. And so 
This is why I believe that Trump is going to win again, because people are starting to wake up. But I feel like there's a lot more waking up that needs to happen in the church. There's a lot more unity that needs to happen in the church. And so if you remember, and I'm about to end this video, if you remember, I prophesied that, you know, um, Trump was a sign for America to repent. And then I, and then here we go. The coronavirus comes and shuts everything down and everybody has to reevaluate. People have a chance to repent. People have a chance to reset things in the church. We're getting corrected and addressed because God is preparing us for the things that are com coming. He's honestly, he's setting us up for success. And a lot of people are just going to keep doing things the same way. If, if churches open back up and you go back to your church and they still talk on the same old stuff, they still talk on the same old knots and there's been no change, no shift. I would get out of churches like that. All right, but I got to go get on this airplane. I'm headed to Texas. Going to preach in Corpus Christi, uh, Christi this weekend. Corpus Christi. I must be thinking about donuts. It's so early. <laughs> but I'm going to love you guys. Hey, don't be sending no money to nobody. I appreciate those of you who sow into my ministry, but I will never inbox anybody asking money. I'm, it's just so irritating that I got to say this. Facebook won't verify me, nor will Instagram. I've been shadow banned on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, you got to hit the three dots in the corner and hit turn on post notifications. A lot of people have not been seeing um, the notifications. All right. So, um, yeah, with that being said, I'm leaving. Go check out Heavenly Places. Go check out the book and worlds. Go check out the song Insecure and um, oh, the website www.marcusrogersministries.org. All right. If you guys are going to uh, continue to sow, just go to the website. Please don't send money anywhere else. Love you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus name.